coming up. London Tweed Run cyclist ditched Lycra for a style ride. Margot Robbie is to produce an ensemble superhero movie starring Harley Quinn. Virginia congressional candidate leaves porn tabs open on Facebook post. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Millions more workers would be eligible for overtime pay under a new federal rule. Blizzard vows to improve Twitch chat after Hearthstone racism fiasco. And this one took me by surprise. Mississippi Town must desegregate schools after a 50-year battle. Yeah, that's a surprise. Um, and the UK science minister torpedoes Bodie McBoke face as a ship name. And more on this episode of What's. Hello there, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again. This is the Wide Open Talk Show 4. Today is Wednesday, May the 18th, 2016, and I'm Donovan Adkisson, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, my friend, Sam Lewis. Hey, Sam. How's it going? It's going great. Fantastic to be here on a Wednesday talking some just random stuff that we found across the net with you. <laughs> random, crazy, weird, sometimes political, sad, sad you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it just runs the gambit. Yeah. And anyway, this is a call-in show and that number, which you, if you're a video um, viewer, video viewer, wait a minute, that sounds redundant. <laughs> anyway, if you're watching the video, hey, hello there, it's good seeing you. That number's at the top, 229-518-3525. All right, so let's get started. I don't know <laughs> anything about this first story. I, I read the article. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> this is just something cute to start us off. Um, so there is a, apparently this is a yearly thing now, um, but it is a, a bicycle ride in London, all the way in the UK in London, um, called a style ride. And what it pretty much does is instead of going for the usual lycra and stuff like that that you have in a bike ride they go for the traditional british attire they've got their tweed going and their hats and their all that stuff they they make themselves kind of look victor well yeah i guess victorian england would be the right time period so they look they have themselves looking quite fancy gentlemen and ladies running around it's just it's just a thing as a lark, really. It's just to have some fun. Some of them even ride penny farthing bikes, the the really big bikes that are still two wheels, but one of them's a really freaking large wheel, um, almost so, as tall as a man. Yeah, it's 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 almost steampunk esque. I I guess would be a way of putting it. Only the the steampunk aspect is that apparently everyone time traveled to current day. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's it's just fun. It's it's like some of these other races, like you'll have a race on St. Patrick's Day and everyone wears something green and crazy outfits involving that, or a Halloween race where everyone's running in, you know, their best costume. This is pretty much the same basic principle, but it's them taking a throwback to old times and just tweeting it up and everything. It's it's kind of nice. <laughs> Did you say Tweeting it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I was I was just I was just wondering. The one that got <laughs> me, and I told you before the show that I was gonna have to make fun of this, but mm -hmm. you know, they were talking about crowds took photos as the well dressed riders, some on vintage bikes, including the penny far things like you talked about, toward the Capitol streets at a fairly leisurely pace. And um they were saying uh, the spokeswoman said, we take to the streets in our well-pressed best and cycle through the city's iconic landmarks. Along the way, we stop for a tea break and a picnic stop, and we usually end up with a bit of a jolly knees up. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, my 12-year-old, I, I tried to put him back in the toy box, but he <laughs> came out, and he, he just got really red-faced and started laughing and chuckling whenever... <laughs> whenever he read Jolly Knees Up, because that sounds like a very sexual euphemism. But, it, <laughs> but it's not. It actually means to party or dance or something like that, as our yeah. 
as our producer pre-show actually had looked up in LinkedIn chat for me because apparently he figured I'm a dumbass and I didn't know what it was. And that's okay. He's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Um, yep. But yeah, that's, uh, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Got to love the Brits. Oh, I would attend something like this in a red hot minute if I had the proper attire. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of I am interested in like steampunk type stuff, but I'm not interested in wearing tweed. Mm. Not really. Or riding unless bicycles. You, unless you're going to Dragon Con dressed as the 12th doc or the 11th doctor. Well, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that you're, one. You Lee would never go for being River, though, so that's... <laughs> no, no, she wouldn't. Mm-mm. Although it'd be fantastic to see now that I think about it. <laughs> true. Very true. Oh, okay. So, Margot Robbie, among all of the other things, I think she really became famous, uh, the, wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, from that movie, and of course she's playing Harley Quinn in the Suicide movie. So mm-hmm. on Suicide Squad, I'll get it right in a minute. Suicide Squad. <laughs> it could be the Suicide movie. You never know. It depends <laughs> on how well it does. Yeah. But uh, the Suicide Squad movie. Um, apparently she's actually going to produce an ensemble superhero movie starring that character of Harley Quinn. Mm. Uh, according to THR says Robbie fell in love with DC Comics female characters while reading for her role in Suicide Squad, and after bringing on a writer to help with the concept, she brought the concept to Warner Brothers. The company reportedly jumped on the idea, though details on the plot and the cast are being kept secret. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, Harley is one of those characters that was not in the original mythos. She was... uh, introduced in the actual animated series back in the the late 90s or what have you. Mm -hmm. Always one of my favorite villains, kind of, sort of, maybe. Question mark. Question mark, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Even through her various incarnations. uh, There was just something about that character. I think they did a very, very good job. Matter of fact, it was a Batman animated series back in 1992. Yeah. God, I didn't realize it had been that long. Yeah, I guess it has. Uh, My childhood. (laughs) That's <laughs> I was twenty two and mm-hmm. was and had just become a father, so <laughs> you can have your childhood, Lewis. <laughs> so You were just losing yours. Oh, I, I, yeah, too definitely. Far. <laughs> too far. <laughs> too far. Ah. <clears throat> <sighs> so it says Warner Brothers is betting on Harley Quinn's popularity when uh Robbie's performance hasn't yet been seen. And it's a big risk. Uh, So the company's plans for the DC Universe appear to be in disarray. On top of the critical disappointment that was Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, which I still haven't seen, Mm -hmm. and I'm probably not going to be disappointed like every, you know. I I take what critics say with a grain of salt. Because most of the time, I think critics are actually expected and paid to, to denigrate movies, which in turn makes people want to go see them. It's this vicious cycle. It's like, oh, this, oh, yeah. this thing is complete crap. Oh, I got to go see it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, some people that I more trust than critics have also not given exactly glowing reviews of it, apparently. But it's, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm probably going to see it, but only because Batman's in it. I've, I've, I've told you this before. If it were just Superman, I'd... I honestly wouldn't be that interested. The The only Superman that I was ever interested in was when it was on television and it was <sighs> Dean Cain. Yeah. There we go. That was the name. Yeah, I used to love that show back in the day. Um, but I've, I've just been, always been more of a Batman guy than I've ever been Superman. You know, you sometimes usually fall into one of the two categories. Sure. And I've always been more Batman than Superman. So I like them both. Um, and, and during the actual airing of... Uh, the Adventures of Lois and Clark, which is the one mm-hmm. Dean Cain was in. I yeah. like the show. Now, going back and actually looking at some of the, the clips, it, it it pains me. It it really <laughs> yeah. does. It pains me. It is not a, It has not held up very well. Now, mm-hmm. granted, what, what I find interesting, um, you know, Dean is still in in the, the DC universe because he plays the uh, adoptive father of Supergirl in the new Supergirl mm-hmm. series. 
Obviously on purpose, right? <laughs> um, obviously. Well, the adoptive mother is the actress who actually played Supergirl in the late 1970s, early 1980s Supergirl movie. Right. I'd almost forgotten about that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but now, see, I don't, I don't know what your feelings are on Man of Steel, but I personally loved Man of Steel. Yeah, it was... There was a lot of destruction and chaos, and um, in, in that the, the whole ending about you know that it was out of character for Superman to do what he did and all of that, and you know what I'm not going to beat around the bush. I mean, he kills Zod, okay? Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it by now, I'm sorry, but um, mm -hmm. I really liked it. So as long as the Batman versus Superman movie is as good as Man of Steel, or it has the same type of qualities then I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. Because I think what people I'm... are just too damn critical when it comes to these these movies. They Especially, I mean, DC's trying to get there where Marvel's at. And even Marvel's starting mm -hmm. to suffer from this. It's like, well, you know, look at Age of Ultron. We, ha we had the Avengers, and that was a, a, a hellaciously good movie. Then we have the Age of Ultron, and suddenly it's like, well, this one's not quite as good as the first one. <laughs> it was still a freaking awesome movie. It was, yeah. There were, there were problems, definitely, but as critics, it was their job to find problems, and I even found a couple of them. But it, it, that doesn't mean that it was a bad movie by any chance. It just had its issues, right? Yeah. I, th I think Age of Ultron suffered from the trying to cram too many people into one thing syndrome, right? Um, well, that's but, typically what happens with a lot of super, I mean, uh, superhero movies, not Superman, but superhero movies like yeah, that. That's usually what kills a franchise. Look at Spider-Man. Mm. You know, the third movie in the original Spider-Man trilogy is the one that pretty much put the kibosh in that trilogy. Mm -hmm. Then, then they came out. We had the amazing Spider-Man. The first movie I thought was pretty good. I've never actually gotten around to seeing the second one, but they did the same damn thing again. They tried to put too many villains in it, and suddenly it's like, well, you know, that particular reboot of the franchise is now over, and now we've got yet another Spider-Man. So, Which I am so looking forward to. Uh, after seeing Civil War, you have no idea how, how excited I am for this Spider-Man. It's like we finally have an actual freaking Peter Parker. Yeah. I mean... Toby Maguire, meh. Okay, I'm not. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush, meh. Mm -hmm. But uh, Andrew Garfield, I liked more because yeah. they put more quippiness in it. But this one, you you haven't seen Civil War, so you haven't seen him in action yet. Oh, it was like, mm, yes, we've got Peter freaking Parker finally. You know, it's like <laughs> leave it to Marvel to do it right. Who would have thunk it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, it's 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 going to be so good. And. Just, just and and Civil War didn't even fall for the trying to cram too many people in. They got two origins in both Spider-Man and Black Panther, and they and this isn't spoiling anything, but they don't really go too deep into them. They're sort of like, oh no, people know who these guys are. Everyone knows what Spider-Man's origin and is. We don't have to go into this for a fifteenth millionth time. <laughs> so they Definitely. so they just sort of allude to it. It's like I think he says like it was a long day or something like that, and that's about <laughs> as far as we go for it. So, yeah, it's it, it's good. So I'm um, I'm really looking forward to when you get the chance to see it whenever it comes out on DVD and stuff. So yeah, so we can talk about it in further detail. So yeah, to speak. I'm I'm looking forward to it too. Just always remember, Team Stark, Team Stark. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm actually looking forward to, you know, today being Wednesday, I believe the season finale or either the penultimate episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. should have aired last night. It was. Yeah, it was the finale last okay, night. So, it was two hours, apparently. So, so, yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to watching it. So after after we wrap the show and I can do all the post production, pro might not might not get to it because NCIS actually ended. uh you know, it's season finale last night, and we've got a major, yep. a main character leaving. So, uh, yeah, I got to see a little bit of that when I came in from D and D last night. So I sat down and watched a little bit of that with mom because I was like, oh, because I, I, I used to watch NCIS all the time. I just don't have time anymore now, right? With all yeah. the stuff I've got going on, sure. but it doesn't mean I still don't love the crew. And seeing Denozo go, just mm, even I, if I'm not watching the show anymore, it's just like. 
after mm-hmm. 13 years 13 yeah. years of course he's he's not he, he's not leaving television he's already got right. a, a brand new show where he's basically playing dr phil so mm-hmm. we'll uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes and of course castle castle completely ended monday night and they uh i think they did a pretty good job on that they they had actually shot two versions of of that season finale depending on whether they were going to get picked up for the ninth season or not and and i That's have smart <laughs> my sneaking suspicion is and i have nothing to back me up on this my sneaking suspicion is that if they had gotten picked up for a ninth season kate beckett would have died in monday night's episode because mm-hmm. because uh Stana was not coming back. She had right. already been cut from the cast. Mm. So if they had done that. And and so I'm glad that they I mean, I'm gonna miss Castle because I liked I like Nathan. I mean, he's yeah. you know he he's a geek. He's right there with the you know, all of those folks that we, we like to watch and listen to and, and what have you. Um but I think it was time to end it. I mean when you start when you start dissecting a show and taking out components that made it a success it's yeah. time to end it i mean mm-hmm. too many times they've tried to you know even go through spinning off shows and they yeah. they might last a season and it's like well we just can't can't capture what it was from the original show i mean the golden girls did that friends did that with joey um even inspector gadget did that at some point if you would believe the amount of times that they did different inspector gadget versions you have to, it's just insane yeah the stuff that they did they did they did one that was aimed at younger kids called gadget boy where it was a kid <laughs> that was that had all the gadgets inside of him and he was apparently i think inspector gadget's nephew or something if i'm not mistaken so it was i don't know why he had to be related to him because they put all the implants in there it wasn't like it was a genetic thing but ah who cares <laughs> i guess you got to keep it in the family maybe i don't I know. guess so i don't know <laughs> mm. well um I, I guess to wrap this one up about um the harley quinn movie if you will and i'm not going to necessarily it's not going to be a harley quinn movie itself but it's it's going to star harley quinn and then you're going to have other female heroes and villains like Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. So, I'm uh, you know, it kind of piqued my curiosity and uh-huh. you know, Margot's not hard on the eyes, so <laughs> Yeah, and she from the trailers it looks like she's going to be a good Harley Quinn. So, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Just enough crazy. Again, it's crazy whenever I'm actually looking more more forward to seeing Suicide Squad than I am Batman versus Superman. So that's that's an interesting thing. That is somewhat <laughs> telling, I guess. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the lesson that we're about to learn in this particular article <laughs> is that whenever you do a screenshot of your browser, please be aware of what is in your various tabs. Yeah. Because a partic- uh, Virginia congressional candidate did not. He took a snapshot of a Facebook post and... <laughs> oh, well, let's just say it was probably one of the his, his most uh, popular posts on Facebook. It said uh, it reached about 200,000 people. And he tried to... He tried to, I won't say cover it up, but he he tried to ride the wave a little bit. I mean, he posted uh, another screenshot on Monday night on Facebook and said, thanks for the tab check, Ranger buddies. Mm. But uh, basically, he had tabs that were open, and the tabs read, Layla Rivera type B.O. Media Sleuths concluded that that unfinished word is booty. And Ivany Sexy Amateur... And, of course, Layla Rivera is a pornographic actress, and both searches bring up pornographic results. Now, here's where it gets a little crazy. Interesting. <laughs> this is this is where, I'm sorry, but you, you basically have to call bullshit on this. Yeah. All right, so he, The Hill reported that Webb tried to explain away the post by saying he was testing a conspiracy theory. Quote, Curious by nature, I wanted to test the suggestion that somehow lurking out in the pornographic world 
There is some evil operator waiting for the one in a gazillion chance that a candidate for federal office would go to that particular website and thereby be infected with a virus that would cause his or her FEC data file to crash the FEC file application each time that it was loaded on the day of the filing deadline, as well as impact other critical campaign systems. Now, now hold on. <laughs> hold on. Okay. Say you're what? Let's, let's give a benefit of the doubt for a second here, shall we? Say you're warned about this. Why would you risk it? Seriously. This is... <laughs> you're not a security researcher. This is not your job. Your, your job is to be governmental and stuff like that. Your job is not to. What well, What if you found out it was right? The <laughs> ima- how would you explain this to your tech guy who would probably be sporting the biggest migraine that has ever existed in your life? I mean, Donovan, imagine you were the tech guy for this group, right? Not hard to, you know, imagine given your line of work right now. If someone explained to you that they got a virus because they were doing research, the amount of annoyance in your head on a scale from 1 to 10, what would it be? <laughs> It'd be about an 11. And I yeah. would and I would look at them for our, for our viewers, I'd look at them like <laughs> <laughs> like that's my you're effing kidding me. You are a moron. I'm not buying this. You know, <laughs> no. Uh, Oh, God. I mean, what is so sad is this is a congressional candidate. Mm. So if this is the mentality, the intelligence level of a congressional candidate, <laughs> I I believe that if anybody was on the fence of whether or not they needed to vote for this guy, here's your answer right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, just don't. I love how he finishes up. But the truly amazing thing about today was that I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and I was very much moved by the love and support of all those who expressed their encouragement and support, even some in the national and local press. Okay, I'm going to express my love and support by saying, you're an idiot. (laughs) You need to go back to whatever the hell it was you were doing before. You do not need to be in government. Hmm. You... He's the kind of guy that'd be sitting up there on one of those committees going, we probably need to get some nerds in here so we can actually know what it is we're talking about. Well, they kind of do. Yeah, they do. That's (laughs) that's a bad example. (laughs) I know. Just because that actually happened. I mean, (laughs) net neutrality. I think we need some nerds up in here. I'll tell you what, folks. I think y'all need to just pack up your crap and go home and... Let those of us that know what the hell we're doing go out there and run this country. <laughs> All right, so another thing that's coming up, and I thought this was actually already in play because I'd, I'd, I'd heard about it like it was already supposed to be active uh, the beginning of either, I think it was the beginning of this year. Mm. But it's a, um, a new rule, a new federal rule, that would actually allow more overtime pay Actually, it would provide there will be more people eligible for overtime pay that are salaried positions. Now, Mm -hmm. for those that don't understand the difference between a salaried position and an hourly position, an hourly position is you get paid by the hour for the number of hours you work. A salaried position, you get paid for basically however many hours you put in. It doesn't work out to an hourly rate. The idea is you get paid for what you know in the overall work that you can do, not being a a, a labor drone. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I'm just simply saying you're not going to be a salaried employee taking orders at McDonald's. Um, You could potentially be a salaried employee if you are the manager at McDonald's or you are supervised. There are certain uh, stipulation and rules uh, in place when it comes to the fair labor's, uh, labor labor uh, standards that you have to pass to actually qualify as what they call an exempt or a salaried position. So what this is actually talking about is keep in mind the benefit of an hourly employee is if you work over 40 hours a week, 
you are guaranteed time and a half. Yeah. If you're a salaried employee, you work over 40 hours, guess what? You're not guaranteed crap. If you are on a $50,000 a year salary and you put in 50 hours a week every week, that's all you're getting is $50,000. Um, a lot of salaried positions actually put in a lot more hours than that, 60, 65. But the, the beauty of a salaried position is you may have a week where you can get everything done in about 30 or 35 hours. Technically, you're supposed to be able to, to leave the job and go do whatever, you know, you know, personal time, what have you. Yeah. So what they're doing now is there is a, a threshold, and I always thought this number was low. If you made $23,660 a year or less as a salaried person, then if you worked over 40 hours, you were supposed to get time and a half. But that's such an arbitrarily low number. And plus, I'm not aware of too many salaried positions that actually pay $23,000 or less. I mean, that kind of money is usually hourly. Mm. So what the federal government, and this, this is the Obama administration, this is something that the president is is really pushing and, and is doing. They're raising it to where the cap is now $47,476, which is actually more palatable because there definitely are salary positions out there that pay thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five thousand dollars. So as long as they stay up under this forty-seven thousand dollar limit and they work over forty hours, then they are going to be guaranteed time and a half for hours over forty. Hmm. This rule is supposed to go into effect in December first. Of course, now you've got business owners going, well, this is just going to cause us to have to reduce hours on certain employees. But then your your unions and all are saying this is something that should have been done a long time ago, which is true. I completely agree. So um, it uh, it it could have the side not benefit, but the the side issue of salaried employees getting basically put back on hourly. You know, there's some caveats to it, but overall, I have to agree with the labor groups and the unions that this this change was long overdue mm. because of the fact that you had many people putting in 50 to 60 hours a week and they weren't getting any overtime. I mean, whenever I was working for the city, I was a salaried employee because, well, I started out as a salaried employee day one because I was management. And then, of course, I became the guy that was in charge of that entire division. Um, yeah, it was it was nothing for us to put in 55, 60 hours a week you know, routinely, on average, probably 55, you know, and to the point where I got sorry and I said, screw it, I'm not doing it anymore, but. Right. <laughs> but yeah, this, I think this is a good thing. So we'll, we'll see what kind of fallout we have from this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, This one is something we kind of talked to, I think we may have brought it up on text land. I'm not sure. Uh, or we've actually talked about it on this show, but this, this was uh, dealing with the DreamHack Austin event, um, and it was we uh, had a we had an off air conversation. Okay, that's what it was. We had an off air conversation. Yeah, um, because you were you were actually listening to or watching the Angry Chicken episode where they were actually talking about this, and I actually caught that episode live while they were recording it, and I kind of mm -hmm. missed out on exactly what it was that they were talking about. But I guess they were having a Hearthstone championship at DreamHack. Yeah. And so during, um, you had a Hearthstone pro by the name of Terrence, Terrence M. That's his nickname, Miller. And he came in second. But instead of everybody, you know, reveling in his accomplishment of being number two and everything, they had to center on the fact that he was black. Mm -hmm. And of, and of course, and this, this was being streamed on Twitch which is the, you know, the number one game streaming service on the planet. Uh, and, uh, and yes, my oldest son does work there. Mm -hmm. I have not talked to him about this because these are the type of things that I don't really want to talk to him about because I don't want, I don't want to feel like I'm trying to intrude. And even right. if he could, even if he knew something, I'm not comfortable with him having the liability of saying, well, yeah, I told my dad this. I don't want him. No, it just 
No. There's certain yeah. things he's comfortable with telling me that are pretty much, you know, public knowledge. I don't want to know anything behind the scenes. As cool as that would be. <laughs> yeah. For for the the safety of his job, I don't want to know it. And he's never yeah. told me anything that's not publicly available. So that's the reason why I've not asked him about this. So, yeah, it, it became, the chat became apparently vitriolic and very racially motivated with slurs and what have you. And, you know, Twitch has got, mo the, you've got moderators that are supposed to handle this. But when you've got thousands and thousands of people in chat, you know, uh, I don't even think five mods can handle that kind of traffic. And I know that I've heard where some some people have said that at a certain point, it seems like that Twitch should have the responsibility of actually paying and having mods in these larger channels. I'm yeah, not, that was what that was what one of the TAC hosts said was a thing. And I'm I don't I'm know if I so agree sure with that about that. Yeah, yeah. me neither. Um, I think if an event is running their stream. Because Twitch is a platform, right? Yeah. I think if an event is running their stream, then they should be paying moderators to run these things. We've got, you know something like a Hearthstone tournament or a Heroes of the Storm tournament or something like that is going to get a lot of people watching it, Yeah. right? So you should be prepared. And I know, sometimes the internet is so vitriolic that you cannot be prepared. I have been in that situation. I was not prepared. <laughs> but you are it, not prepared. Exactly. Yes. Ill Illidan, I think, is yep, who is. That's it. Yeah, Illidan just ringing in our ears, right? Uh, but but yeah, it's it's just something that you need to kind of be prepared for because uh, I I have the great thing of saying that most Twitch channels that I frequent don't have this problem, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're frequented by communities that are loving and fantastic. Sometimes people get salty from time to time, but I'm usually in like um, Chad Johnson, OMG Chad, um, Willie Dills Gregory, Jocelyn Moffat, a lot a lot of the people from like the different show podcasts that I listen to. I also follow their streams, um, and you normally don't have that problem out of it because they're smaller. But whenever you and, and smaller is a relative term, right? <laughs> In comparison to our stone championship, they're smaller. Um, but when you have something like a championship for an esports game or something like that, you're going to get everybody involved. And that's a huge amount of people. And you kind of need to be prepared to deal with the jerks involved. True. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where if someone's of a different ethnicity, if someone's a woman, even they get this crap. So it's it's something that I because part of the problem is that most people instead of calling these jerks out, we just close Twitch chat. Yeah. You know, we know it's going to be a huge event, so we just close it and ignore the jerks. But should we be calling them out? Should we decent people, which I know that I know the decent people outweigh the jerks on the internet. The jerks are just loud. That's why they seem like they're the majority. Um. But I almost think that us people that are decent should almost gang up with our own our own peaceful pitchforks, you know, a little peace <laughs> sign at the end of our pitchfork um, and say, no, dude, you're out of line. Shut the heck up. You know, and it, and I guarantee you with most trolling behavior, all you have to do is have someone or enough people of frequency call them out to where they shut up. Yeah, they immediately shut up. So it's. It's not that trolling behavior is brave enough to face a huge crowd. If a huge crowd goes against them, they just, ah, I wasn't prepared for this, and run off into their little cave somewhere. <laughs> uh, so I, with that in mind of the way that a troll's behavior is, especially considering these are mostly hurt people, right? I mean, if we take a look at trolls, they're mostly people that have had some sort of pain in their life, and they decide to push it on other people yeah, to feel good, you know? So I'm not exactly as angry at trolls as a lot of content creators are because I kind of understand the psychology of it that, whoa, someone has done something to them in their lives that has made them this way, and I feel really bad for them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which, which I've talked to trolls that way, and they go, screw you, man. I'm like, eh, I tried. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's it just, 
I think that if, as a community of people that are on this platform, myself included, you watch Twitch streams, if all of us joined together and said, no, screw you, you can't just say that, then this problem might not be as big as it is. But the problem is most of us either we're sitting back, we're watching a trip. Yeah. We're not in the mood to be police, you know? So it, well, it a lot of times skates right past. And, yeah. You know. Well, it's like, the, it's like the quote is, you know, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And that's pretty much yeah. what it comes down to is we don't want to be bothered. We, we, we're there to enjoy the experience of the stream Screw the chat. I mean, I, I a lot of times I don't even pay that much of a, uh, attention to the chat. Chat's not a big thing for me when it comes when it mm. comes to uh, to Twitch streams. I'm there for the content. Um, I know there are a lot of people that really love the chat uh, because they can interact with the streamer and that type of thing. And I've done that. I mean, I've I've been a big follower of uh, Warwitch TV. I, I used to actually be one of his uh, subscribers, which I'm not any longer. And it's not because his content's lacking. It's just I got to the point where it, it, I was no longer interested in the video games that he was doing. And, you know, I go in phases. But, uh, yeah, it really comes down to the people. The whole idea of that chat is it's supposed to be self-policing. And the mm. thing that we run a risk of is when we can't self-police, then someone else is going to do it for us. And then we're going to get pissed off because now we've lost control. And we don't yeah. want that. So it is up to us to, to take matters into our own hands. And there is absolutely, I, I can't get this in my brain. I don't understand. This is freaking 2016. Where <laughs> yeah. the hell is all this racism coming from? Yeah. I don't totally. understand it. Now, I guess some people could argue, well, of course you don't understand it. You're a Southern white male. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sorry if I was born with lighter skin. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going down that road. Is is I don't get it's it. Just, it just doesn't mean that it, just because we were born that way does not mean we can't sit there and marvel and go, "Why are you people jerks?" I don't. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, this guy, I, I don't know him. I mean, he looks like a a a, a typical male. His skin's darker than mine. You know. But he's a hell of a good Hearthstone player. I'm not. I suck at it. Um, kudos to him for coming in and second. I, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, this guy kind of came out of nowhere, which means that there was probably a bit of that esports fan. My guy didn't win. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 involved in it too, because honestly, esports people can get just as ridiculous as sports people can. Oh, so yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. What? The interesting thing is, of course, Hearthstone is a Blizzard game, and so Blizzard has actually weighed in on this. Uh, Mike Morheim, who is the CEO, said this uh, via PC Gamer, uh, quote, We're extremely disappointed by the hateful, offensive language used by some of the online viewers during the DreamHack Austin event the weekend before last. One of our company values is play nice, play fair. We feel there's no place for racism, sexism, harassment, or other discriminatory behavior in or outside of the gaming community. This is obviously a larger societal problem that affects us on many levels. We can only hope that when instances like this come to light, it encourages people to be more thoughtful and positive and fully reject mean-spirited commentary, whether within themselves or from their fellow gamers. To help combat this type of behavior during live events, we've reached out to players, streamers, moderators, along with partners like Twitch, DreamHack, and others to get consensus and collaborate on what to do differently moving forward. To that end, we're investigating a pilot program that Twitch has in the works to streamline moderation and combat ban evasion. We're also updating our esports tournament partner policies with a stronger system of checks, balances, and repercussions to provide a better chat experience around our content. We believe these are important steps to take to help address the related issues, but we acknowledge that they only address part of the problem. This is ultimately an industry-wide issue, and it will take all of us to make a real impact. Now, mm. I find this quite interesting that a company who has no other relationship with 
Twitch, for example, and I say this, I mean, I don't know what their back end deals are, if they've got some kind of relationship, but You've got Twitch as the streaming platform, and then you've got Blizzard who owns and produces the Hearthstone video game. Mm. I find it interesting that they are taking a keen interest in this because of the fact that this happened around one of their video games, even though it didn't happen in a chat system that they have any responsibility for. Mm. So... I think that's a good thing. Kudos to Blizzard for actually stepping in and going, look, you know, this this actually puts a bad mark on on this for everyone. Mm. You know, not just necessarily Twitch or Dream Dreamhack or, you know, it 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 tries to put Hearthstone or Hearthstone supporters or players or, or groupies, whatever you want to call it, in a bad light. Uh, it's it's just something that doesn't need to happen again. And everybody, you know, we're here to enjoy this. Let's have fun. Like they say, play fair, play nice. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure how, you know, what other companies would actually take that type of stance. Yeah, totally. So it, and it is, it is within their interest to make sure something like this doesn't happen on the auspices of one of their games. So as usual, but it's not a surprise at this point, Blizzard taking a bit of initiative, as mm -hmm. it were. They they tend to do this sort of thing, and that's why I've kind of I've grown to love Blizzard as a company, as I've been ushered into the community, as it were, with Hearthstone and <laughs> Heroes, and now Overwatch. So they they've slowly got me in, and now I I understand what all these people were on about now. So it's nice. Yep, it's a good company. I hope they. Continue to produce good quality video games, mm. even if their last uh, World of Warcraft expansion sucked. But anyway, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right, so this is interesting. I didn't necessarily stagger these this way on purpose, but so we're we're coming from an article talking about racism, racial slurs or, or surrounding uh, an event, an online event, video games, and then we get this article, and I this one floored me. Yeah. Mississippi Town is being ordered to desegregate their schools after a 50-year battle. There was a school that was still segregated? I mean, that's the yes. immediate response, right? Yeah. So, we got the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Mississippi has ordered that two high schools in Cleveland, Mississippi should be consolidated into one high school immediately, calling the sustained uh, sustained segregation a decision and a burden that deprived generations of students of the constitutionally guaranteed right of an integrated education. Mm -hmm. The court rejected two alternate proposals presented by the district. Don't even don't know what those are, but they rejected right. it and said no. You have to consolidate a mostly black middle school and high school with the mostly white ones, effectively ending segregation in this town of 12,000 people. This is 50 years after the Brown versus Board of Education. So it sounds like we've got schools that are mostly black, mean, meaning that they've got some white people. And we've got a school that's mostly white that's got a f some black people. So it wasn't 100% true segregation, but close enough, apparently. Yeah. And so the court is like, nope, you got you to gotta mix them together. You got to integrate them. It says the district has about 3,700 students, 66% black, 30% white. Here's what I, here's what I don't get. A lawyer for the district told the Jackson Clarion Ledger that they are still reviewing the 96-page decision and are deciding whether to appeal. <laughs> what is there to appeal? It doesn't seem like their problem is not enough room, right? No. And even then, you open two schools not as a, no, we'll put these people over here, we'll put these people over here. I mean... Actually, technically, you are, but not not based on skin color, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, just. I mean, one of those few times I'm slightly speechless. 
All I can say is Cleveland, Mississippi, you are on the wrong side of history. <laughs> mm. Definitely. Uh, all right. Last story. And I actually found the update to this one because once you shared it and I read it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. They actually did name this. Mm-hmm. So the backstory is the, the, U- the UK science minister, let's see, they had this new ship. Yeah. So what they did is they decided to uh, have this contest where they would take submissions to what, uh, as to what to name the ship. <laughs> so as a joke... Because it actually came from a former BBC radio host, James Hand, and he's apologized for this. But as a joke, <laughs> he submitted Bodie McBoatface. And as you would expect, the internet happened. Mm. And Bodie McBoatface became the number one selected name to name this ship. It's a, just so you know, it's a $300 million research vessel. So can yeah. you imagine a $300 million research vessel called Bodie McBoatface? <laughs> I can imagine that. Let's, let's see if I can go into this properly. I can imagine the parliament reviewing one of their research times. And the honorable gentleman from the research boat, Boaty McBoatface, <laughs> has now come forward. You, sir, are horrible. Not only are you horrible, but the name of your boat is shite, sir. And you should be immediately reprimanded. And then a bunch of guys around him going, because they don't have quiet meetings like we do in America. So We don't have quiet meetings here either. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've stopped having quiet ones. That joke used to work. But yeah, now they're getting more and more like the parliament every day. So. <laughs> yeah. So as you would expect, Bodie McBoatface was actually rejected. Mm. It- Which... I don't, they crowdsourced this. They crowdsourced the thing. But the internet me is going to have a little bit of a miniature conniption fit. Not a big one, but a miniature one, okay? They crowdsourced this. Ask the people to name this boat. Which, Bodie McBoatface is not the worst this boat could have been named no. by the internet, by the way. It could have been something offensive or anything. Bodie McBoatface is getting off easy, okay? <laughs> so then they do all this and go, we don't like the name. We're, we're going to name it something else, which the, the name that they name it, because we got the follow-up, is appropriate. It really is. But mm-hmm. still, you crowdfunded this, and then you said, oh, take back. Taxis, <laughs> we're not going to do it. It's like, that's come on, guys, really? Just, just name. What's the worst that can happen? I was listening to the guys over at the We Have Concerns podcast talk about this, and... They they said about the worst thing that could happen would be if the boat tragically crashed. Can you imagine the reports? Thirteen people died in the tragic crashing of the research vessel Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> it, it would be horrible. Yeah, it would but, be. It would be but horrible. You, but you but you cross your fingers and pray to whatever deity you believe or don't believe in that that wouldn't happen. So with that in mind, what is there to lose with just Taking it. Take it. You you made the mistake of crowdfunding it. Take the freaking name. I'm sorry. But you you lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> well, that's because the science minister, Joe Johnson, said the ship needed a more suitable name. He said, I quote, I think we were clear when launching the competition that we were looking for a name that would be in keeping with the mission. So they went with the uh, Sir David Attenborough, which is a which is a fine name for a research. Oh vessel. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have necessarily wanted it to be named Bodie McBoatface either. Um, I can't blame them. I wouldn't. I mean, it. This is this is a three hundred million dollar research vessel. There's a lot of prestige that comes <laughs> with this. Okay. I'm yeah. not slapping the name Bodie McBoatface <laughs> on my $300 million research vessel. I know, I know. But just <laughs> like I said, there's the, there's the, 
I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. There's that slightly diamond clubby part of me that just wants it to be Bodie McBoatface. I, it's, I mean, that'd be like if it was a warship. It's like, you know, we're, we're down and out. You know, we're, we're down to, we're, we're running out of ammo. We have no more shells. We've called in reinforcements. Who's coming? The warship Bodie McBoatface. Well, you know what? I got one bullet left. Because <laughs> I'm not being saved by Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> it would be the boy named Sue effect. That would actually be the roughest ship in the entire UK Navy. <sighs> it would be known for being the most vicious ship because it has to deal with the name. That's right. <laughs> You will fear the name Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, yes, it, it is the Sir David Attenborough. Mm, which he's, he does wonderful nature documentaries and stuff like that. Like I said, it's, it, it is a really good name for it. Oh, so. yeah. And he said he was truly honored by the decision. Mm -hmm. He's about to turn 90. Or he he is 90 now. It was just a couple of days before he turned 90 that the announcement was made. So that's a nice birthday present, don't you think? Wow. Have nice. a vessel yeah. name after you. Yeah. I hope whenever I turn 90, they'll they'll uh, name, you know, the it'll it'll be an American ship. So it'll be the, the USS asshole named <laughs> for me. It would not surprise <laughs> me if that already exists in the <laughs> military. But anyway... <laughs> Probably so. Keep firing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fire in the hole. The asshole. Anyway, I, I think with that, we're going to end today. <laughs> On that high note. <laughs> On that high note, <laughs> we bring you nothing but top quality commentary and opinions <laughs> on this show. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, Sam, do your plugs. Where can you be found? Well, you can find me at about.me slash labtech7 for all of my social links. Um, if you want to support me, because Donovan's going to make me plug this anyway, you can go to tscn.tv slash support for my Patreon. I made that link a bit easier because you don't have to learn how to spell Patreon that way. That's right. Um, and, it, and if you come in at the $5 level, you get access to the TSCN Slack channel. So That's right. So go over there and support him because I'm all alone on the support page. I'm there by myself. I need some company. So. And then, of course, you can find all of the content that will be funded with that at tscn.tv. Yep. So. Site's looking good. Mm, it regenerated today. It's yeah. quite nice. It's, uh, so it's, uh, let's see, this would be doctor number two. Anyway, um, <laughs> technically number three, number because three I started on a blogger platform. Oh, so then yes. I moved over, so. yes, yes, yes. Okay. So number three. Hmm. All right. Well, everything I'm doing is over at slant.fm. My social media stuff is at about.me slash GD Adkisson. You know, I thought about, I, I wish they would give me a way of changing that because I've started, you know, my change, my Twitter to actually Don Adkisson because it hmm. used, it used to be GD Adkisson, but there's no way that I can find to actually rename an about.me page. Yeah, I know. That's that's one of the reasons why mine's still LabTech 7. I've been meaning to move everything over and maybe keep that one active for the old content, but yeah. just move all the same stuff to a new page because I could do that. So yeah, I've been thinking about happen. doing something like that too. Yeah. All right, well, if you've got any feedback, the email address is feedback at slant.fm, and if you want to leave us a voicemail about anything we talked about in this episode or previous episodes, or you just want to tell us we're doing a fantastic job, we'd really appreciate that. And the number is 313-718-2557. Uh, 313-718-2557. And yes, that is a different number than the call-in number, so that is for voicemail only. We record this show live every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So have a great week. We'll see you next Monday for another episode of Watts. Take care. We'll see you then.
This show was a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.